What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Juventus Football Manager 2023 Let's Play. Thanks to all you guys that watched the first episode, had a bit of an introduction on yeah how we're going to play this out. And of course, it'll be a bit more, yeah, a bit of more uploads in, in between episode one, episode two. Last couple of days, been playing through the preseason. You know, I don't need to explain how that is. To be honest, I think I press uh, continue uh, in terms of the majority of that time. Like majority of the time was me just pressing continue, uh, tying up the signings quicker process, <laughs> but a lot of days to get through. Though, yeah, just a bit of a roundup here expectations quite high for this season budget we spent a little bit and we're going to talk about money because as I have in the title I want to label it as kind of a rebuild I want money to be the big focus but also so you see the kind of things that I see and things you wouldn't really notice but maybe you have not gaining a lot of subscribers that is the case. Uh, but shout out to the one person that cut into those negatives. Uh, but yeah, basically, when you're an older YouTuber, uh, and it could be other reasons as well, but for the most part, those unsubscribers were right away. So they see a new upload like, oh, I'm still subscribed to him. But then also I get these other comments from you guys uh, that are more positive, like saying you've been subscribed for so long. So I more appreciate that. But it's more so you guys are aware that, uh, yeah, that does happen. And you know, I make my videos, you know, at home, alone on my own. So when a negative thing comes up, I don't care too much, but it's like, oh, so, you know, you see a few people unsub, might have some choice words to myself. <laughs> well, not, not to myself, out loud. All just a bit of fun. But yeah, more importantly, like we touched on, even though we have cut into our finances because of, for the most part, because of the transfers we did make, uh... We will go and explain the transfers, so we'll show you that. But it's not the only thing. If we type in loan here, and this is not for a player we loaned. Here we go, a lot of messages, of course. Uh, there's a couple uh, things that could be called loans in Football Manager, but this is where money is concerned. There was a 263 million bank loan taken out earlier, so that's going to be need to be paid back. So yeah, we're going to have a big focus on thinking, well, where, where they started uh, because that's what we just touched on right now, uh, the bank loans. That's really where we're coming from, but that wasn't really in my hands. Uh, you saw how much we had around the start. Not a whole lot, but yeah, how we spent that money a little bit, hopefully will be good long term. And the biggest name here, I wasn't intending to sell right away Adrian Rabio, but his contract was expiring and he came to me basically saying he was going to leave on a free. So like come the end of the season. So my hands were tied a little bit. I'm like, oh, I better get something for, for you now, mate. Like, you could be, like, very important in the first team. But if you're going to leave, get value for you, you're 27, which might be the issue with some other players, that they're 30 and their value, yeah, they're 30 plus. They haven't got much value in them, so we're keeping them on. But this was different because he was demanding. He was kind of, yeah, saying he'll leave. So... Uh, probably a good foot uh, for Manchester United there, fits in well. Uh, definitely, yeah, more of those midfielders uh, centrally to phase out the likes of Fred and McTominay. Uh, yeah, it's a good move for United, so help them out a little bit. And then some others, yeah, those lower likes, uh, the smaller type names, not as notable. Yeah, they're a lot of younger guys as well, so uh, just get what we can for them. And yeah, then we're going to focus on the guys you brought in, which I was pretty happy. So that's where that extra money was really spent. Uh, you know, give or take, you know, it's not, not the exact same fee for either one of them. Uh, but yeah, it was an additional transfer. If it was one for one, you know, yeah, you, you know, you, you adjust the budget a little bit. Doesn't look like you really spent too much. Well, even if you're just talking about out of the actual balance and not transfer budget. So, the first move we went with was Andreas Sheldrop, who is a very good young player. Like he's a wonder kid. Got him what I think will be a bargain price. I've uh, definitely seen him in FM before, and even just this year as well in FM twenty three. Uh, but I haven't really, yeah, I've had him in like one save and that was like early on, like on the beta. Uh, so there's still a lot more for me to discover with him in Football Manager this year. Uh, he, he, like, he's got everything there. Maybe apart from like stamina, it's something we're working on early stages. Uh, his endurance will be part of that, but his work rate 
is fine. So I always am a bit, I don't even know what the word is for that. Like confused is not it because I would want to be working on stamina. It just, yeah, it, it's a bit mixed because I feel like working on his work rate, he doesn't really need to. But I feel like if you are working on your stamina, work rate is going to come with that. So yeah, your, your hands might be tied. So yeah, just definitely that stamina will want to improve a little bit because uh, yes, yeah, it's so important uh, in terms of uh, playing a lot of games uh, when you've got heavy fixtures. So shell drop, very good move, especially in terms of, I don't like signing players for current injuries, but he's more long-term as well. But he might see more first-team football early in the season compared to likes when Di Maria come back. So this was a big decision. This was basically the replacement of Rabiot. There was a couple cheaper players if we were going for those bargain moves, trying to play some money ball to make those yeah profits because uh, that's going to be definitely a focus uh, of this series. And maybe, like, like uh, if, you know, if I really enjoy this, we can do series like this long-term, uh, not just rebuild the team player-wise, but, yeah, money-wise, uh, fix up the club financially. But, yeah, uh, there was a few other guys, but Almas, I've got to find value in these players where you look at the age, he's going to improve. You might think of that. There's two ways about it. You're like, oh, you, if you consider him as a youngster for the future, you're not making profit off him, which is not necessarily the case. Uh, you're getting value, hopefully, for a long-term player if he just plays for you know however many seasons, uh, like eight seasons, he gets to 30 and he can play multiple positions. So there's monetary value within that where he could cover other positions and maybe saves you needing to make another signing. But then you never know what happens if players demand to leave. So there's always going to be that case. Uh, but definitely, I think you should see his value go uh, keep going higher uh, than the fee we signed him for. And the fact that he's already been playing in Italy for a few years, it is it, it speaks volumes about his comfortability. Just, yeah, jumping chip over to Juve from Napoli. And, yeah, he could be a very important player and maybe a bit of a vibe of a realis realism and, yeah, realistic signing because, uh, yeah, obviously Juve would have had eyes on him. And, yeah, it, it's a feel-good signing. So for a couple of reasons there, uh, with the focus we're having with the money, trying to improve, obviously short-term, not going to see that massively. Uh, that's going to... It's gonna take it's gonna take a few seasons, of course, to see more than anything. It's like you see that as a yearly update. Month to month we'll keep our eyes on it. But yeah, I like those moves we did make. They're both young signings, but Almas, yeah, a little bit more experience at twenty two. But saying that, looking how he does at twenty two is yeah, pretty nice. But as I said, like on the focus we wanna have for now, we're gonna get right into a game against Bologna. And once more we got an under twenty three T's, Matthias Sule. He's oh, he's got like a, a name. He's Argentinian uh, potential, as you can see there. Not too, not too bright. Again, can we do it? No, you can't. So of course we did that in the first episode, uh, and yeah, we didn't really see too many talents, did we? Uh, only really in the first team. Moretti is the start, not just in the first team, but at the whole club out of the reserves, and we've probably just added one more in Shaldrup. He's a wonder kid at four star potential. So keep that in mind. And Di Maria, I said that, didn't I? The injuries. Look, Chesney now, nine days, three weeks. He's not going to be missing a whole lot. Di Maria, obvious. See, his contract is running out. See, to me, no point in selling him Like at this point in time. Play out the season, and to be fair, probably let him go on 125K. I mean, yeah, that's a bit of weight. That's where a bit of rebuild is going to come next season. It's it's never always going to be to the book the same way. Uh, Quadrado is in the same boat. So that might just be our theme of next season or yeah, end of this season transitioning to season two. These older guys, their value's gone, yeah, like so, so low. So there's no point in selling them. And uh, Quadrado, 155K. Those, yeah, those couple guys are just going to add up uh, by themselves. Like that, just those couple lads together. So, uh, and then suddenly you got to, it's more so not their value, but they've, they've wage, their wage that you're going to be relieving. Uh, and then you can put it into the funds for the following season. Unfortunately, Kian is suspended here. So that's another one on the outs. Di Maria, like we talked about, not too far off. Might just bring Gatti, Pinsolio. Yeah, 
we just fill up uh, fill up the bench where we can. Like, I'm looking at the team. It's it's not bad. It's it's not how we want to go into games. But considering uh, the missing players we have, McKenney obviously you know he's got a loan in real life. But yeah, he's going to be coming back. I'm pretty sure. Not too on top of that. Quadrado, this is where... Yeah, that's how we went to our last friendly. We probably make the change there for Caustic. Uh, we know... Uh, wrong wrong player. Quadrado. Yeah, he's got the connection with Danilo as well. See, that's the thing. They could be fighting for the same position, but also they have a great connection. See, yeah, he could be that more right midfielder. Uh, so his preferred foot is right. We're actually training him inside forward on the left. So... Yeah, as you can see there. Uh, but if we go into the tactics area, he's reasonable on his left. So he, he can still play that pretty well. And yeah, his connection with Danilo down that right side, uh, we should still see that relevant, hopefully. And when we were targeting that signing as well, yeah, we had our tactics in place and we were looking for that role, the Mazala. That's how we yeah came up with Almas. There was a few others. And I guess when we go over to the transfers here anyway, uh, Radu, he's a right back. See, he... Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, I look at him. I see right back, but then we're like, okay, he's probably more of a center half. Uh, he could play a couple, a uh, couple roles, which is always handy. Uh, can't lie. Potential that three star, yeah, would be. You never know. That can change. And there's a few other names. Uh, some to worry about. Some to not. In, in terms of joining us and uh, someone leaving us. Yeah, these are a couple of guys we had on our radar. Maxime Lopez was another kind of ready established. Uh, but yeah, he's more the deep lying type. Not the best you know, if he got in goal scoring positions. He's not a big goal scorer. Very weak as well. I don't just look at his strength, but the height and weight. I don't know if you take much out of it yourselves. But then, yeah, not a really effect in the air. But yeah, just that weak. I don't like saying weak, but you kind of get what I mean. Like he's not. He's not having that impact, even though his aggression is higher. So he probably could not be as bad as what his stature seems like uh, because of his actual attributes. But yeah, just, yeah, my own instinct. Uh, but then this guy was, I was closer to signing when I was thinking about the money and the value. And yeah, it, maybe you could make a profit because there's, there's a reason his value is so low. He's playing in Slovakia. I feel like if he was playing in a top, European division, like he's he's not far off that. Maybe like lower lower Serie A, lower Premier League type team. So you get to know yeah know the idea uh, we're talking about because he's got very good technique. Teamwork's up there, mix of fourteens and fifteens. So yeah, I'd say his value could probably push up to ten million, probably maximum around that much. But yeah, in between seven and ten. And you can make a little bit of profit on him, but yeah, we went yeah we went a different way about it. We went with getting what I would like to think is a better quality at a younger age, and yeah, uh, it's probably better for us going forward, uh, both on the pitch and maybe financially too. And see, this is one thing as well. We're not really looking at players. When we're not really looking, we're going to go no scouting. That doesn't mean you don't see any players at all. Look at this. Oh look, all these scouting recommendation. Oh, they still showed up. What are we missing out on? <laughs> There's still a big pool of players and we should probably clear. Then we just click on, yeah, transfer interest. We've still got, yeah, if if you want to scout for next season, whatever, there's still a whole whole list of players. And obviously you would, yeah, short them down a little bit with s specific positions or whatever. But uh, that's one thing we are going to do with the scouting rage. Just put no money towards that. And even on the, yeah, the scouting budget, it's there to be used. But yeah, transfer budget is on as much as it could be. And also something to keep track of for this season, just over that 20K season tickets were sold. So yeah, those little things uh, monetarily, uh, finance wise, uh, yeah. Uh, we will we will keep in our mind and yeah taking a look at this screen and I guess I'll hold my hand up for the time being but yeah you got to spend money to make money but definitely uh, the transfers we made pushed us over the line or that extra transfer but sometimes you need it there's get see there's so many things it affects it's like oh that extra signing could help us perform better this season, finish higher in the table, maybe make sure we uh, get into Champions League again. I mean, we've got high expectations, fight for the league. So yeah, there's all these individual things it impacts. And there was the first game of the season, Napoli, three very good players there. We're not here to analyze uh, their guys, but yeah, we... <laughs> 
<laughs> just a just a few of their players uh, we would need to worry about. Uh, not just when coming up against them, but also, okay. Sekula, is this, like, I'm pretty sure he's not there, but we'll just right-click that off. Remove from position. Yeah, like, he's not there. <laughs> but we already did a bit of a review of our lineup, so let's get right into the game. Uh, we're looking at a Bologna side that we should get a better of, and a Thiago Motta fairly early in his managerial game, isn't he? Yeah, if you take a look at his ability, managerial-wise is not something I'm worrying about too much. But you know he's familiar with the Italian game. We could have more on the bench, but, you know, injuries. We should have enough about us to see them off today, especially we're playing at home as well. I think I'm going to approach it a bit more in a different a different way, maybe just to be a bit more fresh for you guys as well. I'm going to say, even though it is r recommended by the assistant, this is a match we should be winning. Just go out there, just being a bit more ruthless as a manager. Normally, we pass this off to the assistant, to be honest, and long term, yeah, this is how I usually go about it. Uh, yeah, we hand over to the assistant. But for now, just say I feel great. Considering it's a question about myself, it's always important to play well. And it's no different today. See, this is, yeah, mate. Three. <laughs> Three's your limit, I tell you what. But yeah, definitely take a look at two new signings right off the bat. There's both starting today, very exciting and important positions. Every position is important, of course, but in terms of seeing us going out there and create, yeah, uh, Mazala inside forward, very important roles in terms of that. Uh, so, you know, settings we're playing on, we'll go over to key highlights, match B with the text. You put the text on the fastest. I'll put that up one tab, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, and we go over to the TV and we just mess around with this a little bit, put it on maximum zoom. I think that's what we roll with anyway. So there we go. Might adjust it. But for now, we're going to roll with this and I think we'll be good. Come on. Oh, is that an early carding? No, it was just a warning that it could have been. Here we go. Bremner, let's get the first official game of the season. You might have seen our form. We'll round it up at the end of the uh, end of the episode uh, when we finish this game. But yeah, our form for the preseason was solid. But now we're into the real stuff. Quadrado, I'm very intrigued to see how he plays. Paradis, pretty pretty disappointing finish. Pa Paradis is an interesting central midfielder because he could play a more defensive duty. Or he could be attacking as well, as we as we speak on him a little bit. Like, he's got playmaking roles, but he could be like a ball-winning midfielder. As you can see, look, all those three starts, he's so valuable because of that. Again, 28, he's not a guy we're considering selling right now. When his contract expires, end of the season, he's probably one we want to offer a new contract to. See, uh, I realize that more when I'm playing matches opposed to when I'm getting through the season. Or, like, yeah, when I'm playing through the matches, getting through the season... I'm like, when I'm playing match, wait, when's his contract running out? Opposed to just look at, sort, yeah, which players are running out their contracts. You know, it's never by the book. It's never exactly the same for each player, but it's something you realize sometimes. I mean, like, oh, maybe you're surprised by his contract running out. Oh my gosh. Good start. Let's encourage the lads. Great start, but Paradis. I like when we're talking about him, and okay, that shout, maybe he did get a yellow card in the end, but. That was at the start, so maybe the warning. And then the ref came to him again. He's right. I already warned you, warned you, mate. I'm not sure if he goes with that exact warning, um, but or wording. Oh, Vlahovic, he's going to be, even though he doesn't take it there. He he's going to be the leader. He's going to smash us in goal. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're playing him as the lone striker up top. Paradis getting involved. Free kick time. How efficient is he going to be? Paradis, we, we look really dangerous just for no results right now. And they've got four yellow cards. Looks like it's going to, like, yeah, look, we've restricted them completely. Then Almes just before the half. Okay, we can't, well, you can address that. But first thing we've got to address, maybe we do need a, revert to old time old times and thrash our arms and say that isn't good enough see that just gets them up and 
just just give it to your players, basically. But yeah, with Almas on that yellow, just ease of the tackles. You, it might, I might not find it long before just going into my old ways, team talk wise, because what's tried and true, what works, you get pl- players motivated on the bench as well. So, as I said, there's a reason I would have been doing <laughs> those team talks a lot. But here we go, because that still fits both things. I want to be, want to be pure and honest to the players, and aggressive when you need to be. So, Sandro, who's always been a very good left back in FM, always rated him. Oh, look at that by Shaldrop. Not bad from the youngster, though. Oh, now the gates have to open. He was warned, Jerdy, he was warned at the beginning of the game. You, Mate, you should not be surprised. We're not shocked he's been sent off here, or are we? And just after the halftime break, though, his manager... Tiago Motta will not be happy with that. But see, he maybe he's inexperienced as the manager. Maybe just he doesn't drill it in to him that you can't be that reckless. Come on, mate. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't. Yeah, how I'm saying, I'm like, come on. Like, I wouldn't take that without a doubt. And we do have enough time before we really start pushing for it. But it does, yeah, it starts to become that case because we've dominated all day as well in this style. Uh, higher tempo. We're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to pass a bit shorter but be more expressive now. We'll play a high line. And that's probably going to lead us as well to get stuck in. We've only got the single yellow card. Not, not as bad as they were. We're going to play with the fullbacks now as the game is playing on behind us by the looks of things. So we won't spend too much time here. There we go. Add those. And we'll look for the overlaps as well. Play a little bit wider. Okay. Nothing too much was happening without us. And surely... See, sometimes make sure you pause because time can fly by very quickly. And just say demand more. Now... And now, so, it would be especially, like, a disappointing result. Oh, we'll push to attacking as well. Sometimes you just got to keep tabs on because I can change a few just little descriptions on words of, like, tempo or passing directness. But don't forget, you can make substitutions as well. But our thing is, unless someone like a San- Alexandra, nah, our conditions is relatively good. And because of our current injuries, oh, it could bring on someone like a Western McKinney. Or we can bring on a Milik for a Locatelli. Is that it? So 6.5. Yeah. Play with a couple up top, I think. I think that makes sense when you when you have got that extra man. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave the deep line forward support role for now. Yeah, everyone else, I'm not sure there's a whole lot of match winners on the bench. Shell drop with a bit of inexperience, you could say. Bring on Caustic. Again, we're actually training him over on the right side. As you can see, he's left, left-footed left only, which doesn't help. But the role he's playing could allow Alex Sandro to be relevant. So sometimes that is a consideration as well. And I just think this should be enough for us to get over the line in this last 20 minutes or so. Almas. Paradis, he's been good today and finds a brilliant ball. Oh, forget trying to cut in. S- guys, sometimes, like, maybe some people who feel they're, like, expert about, like, football manager tactics and roles. Oh, Someone who's left-footed only playing it is an inside forward is completely irrelevant and is never going to be efficient. Well, like that is not the case. That is not the case. <laughs> Sometimes it plays on your mind a little bit. You feels like you're doing something wrong. Coming from me, uh, someone who I've played the game since like FM what? F- I can't even remember now. Like since the, the, well, I was like 15 years ago, like half my life ago. Like FM 06, 07 ish. And like, mate, that's always been drum- drummed into me. Like, that's that's why I mentioned it about his uh, weaker foot before, or as I brought him on before the goal. 
because that's always drummed into you that that's not a good move. And you might even feel like you need to bring or change him into a winger role instead of inside forward. But nonetheless, he did that instantly. Instant. I'll tell you what, we might have just... Well, it's because we've got an extra man as well. We look sharp, okay. We look sharp. So you know what we're going to do right now. Might have found a little attacking setup. So, yeah, for attacking formation, I'm going to call it Juventus Titan. If you, if you get it, you get it. For an attacking formation. That's it. When we want to go on attack. We'll switch over this formation. Let's go 2-0. Brilliant. But again, the only thing is they have a red card. They went behind, so definitely they are in. They were in a bad position after conceding. Uh, but we definitely took advantage of that Vlahovic. Like, that's not going to be the last time we're going to be seeing him score goals in this series. That's for sure. That's why he's the key man on the thumbnail. And now we're just going to rest players. Quadrado, we consider age. We haven't really got, like, someone like a, what are we going to do? Yeah, Mc, McKinney. This, now we can just, we're not going to, we're not going to go changing a whole lot, like back to going a DM and stuff. Uh, McKinney's probably going to be a little bit more... He could play that pretty well. So he's like If you were just looking at his different roles, we'll just take a look at that right now just to show you. Uh, yeah, like he's he's competent there, which is not too bad at all. But yeah, just get a bit, a bit of balance there. Maybe same with Philip Costis. Now, this we're just really going to hold on to it. Uh, we'll be pretty, yeah, pretty happy with that. And a bre see, Bremer is not as old. He, he's 25, a little bit more tired. Bonucci is one, you know, he hasn't even had a good game today. So we're going to bring on Daniele Rugani, who might get more of a look in as well uh, in terms of yeah, getting stars. We've got, oh, we got a few names. Moretti, yeah, young star for Almas, who's on a yellow card. All very, you know, straightforward. And he's about the same, very consistent over his role. So that's kind of handy when you don't want to switch up your style too much. You can come in... Uh, the style that's the fit for the formation, but that can easily switch up to a playmaking role as well. But anyway, anyway, you can see he's got a few options there. And there might be a late chance. Rugani, he's just come on. He's just come on. And pretty composed. See, I like that. He worked his way out of something potentially bad. So that's that's good when you can do that. And you don't, you know, stuff it up. <laughs> we may have seen that recently. Uh, you watched the Liverpool game. Maybe it was more so goalkeeping errors, but, you know, still, that's fresh in the mind. <laughs> but look at this. Con oh, oh, I, it takes it back before I finish the sentences because it's like they've got, um, they're a man down. So how much does this all mean? We're going to see in some other matches, but... Yeah, and again, I was going to say what we thought before the match, but also the red card, you know, you've got to put some, you've got a decent percentage of the responsibility on the player, but you, the manager to allow that. Have we allowed a sending off today? No. When players get in danger, we give them a talking to, tell them to ease off tackle. So, well, yeah, the manager does play a part. So, as I said, an experienced manager that knows what he's doing clearly is very important. But yeah, we finished that one off really well today. Because we were in a position where we weren't going to win that game. And we yeah, we needed to really go after it. Uh, maybe make some changes. So let's continue after a very good start there. And there we go. Milik scores on debut. And this is probably where we're going to find the best balance. Sure, he's going to rotate and get some starts. But he could easily be very important off the bench as a... See, we're going to have to see. Uh, if we just make that straight sub uh, when we, we're using the main formation with one striker up top. So, yeah, as I said, we'll definitely add that formation in there. Juventus Titan when we're going on attack. There we go. Yeah, very good start. So as I said at the beginning of the series in the first episode, we're going to really start to, we're going to yeah look to just crank out the episodes from your guys' perspective. We are only going to do one game in an episode, but we're going to record every game. So I'm going to have the feel of the channel the way I've imagined it 
I wouldn't say always imagined it, but on certain time over this long period of me making videos, I've yeah imagined it this way where I just yeah uh, upload a lot and of course yeah they're going to be in a different in a different style but it's going to be yeah more videos hitting your feed and yeah I'm going to be I'm going to be interested to see how it impacts everything but uh, yeah might as well might as well see how we go and yeah if it results uh, in me making more videos the seasons will be longer so just yeah something a little bit different that's going to suit me and it might be better for the channel in the end anyway and just something I would uh, yeah how like I said I've imagined doing that uh, on on occasion and yeah let's just see how we go we'll, we'll crank out a lot of episodes uh, it's it's like the content will be spread over more episodes but yeah equals more videos but anyway at the end of the day hopefully you guys will just enjoy my gameplay and my reactions and yeah getting hype for the games like we did today nice goals and yeah getting some dubs and hopefully seeing the financial benefits uh, increasing our profits and making money that's what we want to do and yeah, as I said earlier, long term, there'll be more, you'll see that long term. But anyway, I'll leave it there. Appreciate the support and I'll see you guys next time.